Get ready for three easy and affordable projects that you will just love this Valentine's Day. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Aneka and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. I have three really fun Valentine's DIYs for you guys today, including my favorite one yet, probably because it involves chocolate, which is also my favorite, but I really hope you guys like that one. So be sure to stick around to the end to see my favorite DIY of this video. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. Everybody leave me a comment down in the comment box below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It's an absolutely free way to support my channel and Honestly, I've just been blown away by all the love and support that I've gotten from you guys already. So thank you, and I'm giving you my love this Valentine's Day, and let's get started crafting. Okay guys, it's time to craft. We're gonna start out with this Dollar Tree sign that I got that had these three galvanized steel hearts on them. And I bought this sign just for these hearts, thinking I wanted to come up with something that would be cute with these hearts. So I took them off and painted them with red chalk paint right in the middle to emphasize the heart. Next, I removed the string from the back of the boards and then I secured the two boards together using these craft sticks and hot glue. Next, I used this garland that I also got at Dollar Tree, and at first I was thinking I would use the front of the hearts, but I actually ended up painting those hearts red. I painted the back of my sign with white chalk paint. Next, I took some ribbon and wrapped it around the top. Now you can use any color ribbon you want for this one. Anything that fits the style and decor in your house will do. I decided to use red, and later on I added some twine. I printed out some lettering just from a Google search, and I wanted it to say, P.S. I love you, because I decided that this was gonna be a love letter station. Now, I'm horrible at writing scripts, so what I did was, I printed out this script from the internet, I colored it on the back with a pencil, and then I taped it onto my board that was already painted with white chalk paint, and I just traced right over it with an ink pen. This made it really easy for me to trace right over it with a paint pen and make it look like I actually knew how to do calligraphy, which guys, I do not. I bet you could barely read my handwriting if I showed you. I decided to add a little bit of twine to the red just so I could have two colors up there. I thought this made it look really natural and fit in with some of the farmhouse decor that's already in my house. Next, I took my hearts, which as I said, I decided to paint them red on the back and I hot glued them down to my love letter station. And I also glued my galvanized hearts right on top. I decided to add one more bow because you can never have too many bows or ribbons when it comes to Valentine's Day. Next, I needed to add somewhere where I could clip my love letters. 
So I just added a clothespin right onto my board. And last but not least, a letter to my Valentine. You guys, I think this is such a sweet idea to put something like this up in your house and every day just leave a different love note for someone in your house. Your kids would love to get a note from you just telling them how much you love and appreciate them. I'm sure your spouse or significant other would also get a kick out of these letters. And it was that easy. I plan to leave this up and just leave little notes of my affection all the way up until Valentine's Day. Next, I wanted to make one of those rustic stacks of books that I've been seeing all over the place and I thought that Valentine's Day was the perfect day to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and make some but I'm going to make sure to make it interchangeable so I can change it out for the seasons. I got some books from the Dollar Tree and I just took the covers off and painted them white with white chalk paint. Next, I used some stickers that I got from Walmart and just added a little message on the side. I decided that I wanted to go with P.S. I love you again. Next, I glued my stack of books together just to make sure that as I'm shifting and dusting and anything like that, they'll stay nice and neat all together. Once those were together, I needed to use something to make sure that the sticker stayed on. You can use Mod Podge, but I actually decided to use this matte paint varnish right on top. I used it all over the books, just in case something ever spilled on them, but I made sure to pay extra attention to the stickers. And once that was dry, it was ready to decorate. Now, I love twine for all seasons. It's all over my house. I just love that natural feeling material. So I'm going to put some twine right on my books and then I'll decorate around that for each season and holiday that comes around. Once I had my twine on, I wanted to figure out what I could do to make this special for Valentine's Day. So I grabbed some pink flowers and some ribbon that I had on hand. I thought that pink and gold hearts went perfectly for this holiday. Now I'm just going to wrap this around the twine because like I said, I want to be able to change this out. I'll probably change it out for the spring right after Valentine's Day. So I'm just going to hang my ribbon right here, place my flowers on top, and that's it. Nice, romantic, and just beautiful. All ready for Valentine's Day and really all year round. Okay guys, and now it's time to eat. But instead of a recipe, I'm gonna show you a beautiful way to display your sweet treats this Valentine's Day. I had the spigot and PVC pipe left over from a project I did where I made a rustic farmhouse soap dish holder. I'll be sure to put the link down in the description box. So I kind of had to piece it together. I had to glue some together because I had it all chopped up for another project, but I spray painted it a rust color and I just love how it turned out. Now I was going to use that white bucket for this project, but at the last minute I found another bucket that was perfect and you'll see that later. I realized that I needed something to make sure that this stayed upright because it is a little heavier than the containers that I was finding at the Dollar Tree and Walmart. So I decided to just glue it into this mason jar and this is just a painted mason jar that I had left over from another project that I disassembled. And so just find anything in your house, it could be a cup, whatever you want. And I needed to weight it down just a little bit, so I added some rocks into the bottom. Once again, you can find any way that you can think of in your house to weight this down. Once I had that nice and steady, I added a few more dabs of glue. And you guys, I'm using my very favorite Gorilla Glue Sticks. I wanted it to hold nice and firm because I knew this was a bit heavy. 
Next, I just used an app on my phone to come up with the lettering on this one because I couldn't find exactly what I wanted online. That app is called Typerama. It's free, but you can use whatever you want. So I just came up with sending you buckets of love. That's what I wanted my bucket to say. And I used the same technique. I colored on the back with a pencil, taped it down to my bucket, traced it with an ink pen, and when I was done, I had a nice stencil and this time I used white chalk paint to paint on my chalkboard on my bucket. You guys, I found this bucket at the last minute at Walmart. It was only $2.50 or $3 I think and it was perfect for this project. Next, I took my mason jar that already had my PVC pipe and my spigot in it and I hot glued it right down into the bottom of my bucket. Now I'm going to need this serving fork that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to add some hot glue and once again this is why I wanted to use a really good hot glue. This is going to need to hang on its own. I use Gorilla Glue but you can use whatever adhesive you'd like to use that you think will have a nice firm hold. I added a few more dabs just to make sure it was secure and now the fun part, the chocolate. Now. A few pieces of chocolate did need to be sacrificed in the making of this project. I put some hot glue on the back so I'm not sure I want anyone eating these. Also, I ate more than a few myself as I was making this. I have seen this done with using glue dots so that that way someone can still eat the chocolate and that's a good alternative as well. I just didn't have any at home. So I went ahead and glued them all the way down my fork. Once you've got the front done, go ahead and add some to the back. Now after adding all these hearts, there were some smaller spaces where I could still see the fork. So for those, I used some Hershey Kisses to cover in the spaces. They were a bit smaller and worked perfectly to fill in all those empty holes. Once that was done, I added a little bit of newspaper down into the bottom of the bucket and I used some pink tissue paper on top of that. This way, as people are eating the chocolate and it gets down to the bottom, you won't see the newspaper, just some pretty pink tissue paper. And once that was done, it was time to fill it up with chocolate. Now all this is chocolate that your friends, family, or guests can eat. And this is just a really fun way to serve up the chocolate and I think it looks just so fun and so pretty. And that's it. This was easy to bring together and I think it has that wow factor that's really going to just be a fun addition to your Valentine's Day holiday. I hope you enjoyed all of these DIYs that I had to show you today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It supports my channel more than you know and I'm just so grateful for all the love and support that I've gotten from you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time when we repeat it all again.